um, ministering on that word. If, if you can just bear with me with, with my allergies, I'm, it, I'm a, probably be sneezing and snorkeling, so I know I sound kind of kind of off today, but it's okay. It's okay. It's life, and it happens. Um, my presence on here today is extremely intentional, extremely intentional. Uh, I don't know about you all, but that word last week, um, and if you have not watched it, you need to watch it. And um, if you know somebody that's going through some changes, you need to tag them in it. Um, that word, ministering on the offer versus the promise, it provoked something in me and all of my friends and even college students and NFL players and um, one of my nephews in particular that is in college, I, I, I text his, his mom and said, I'm, I'm dedicating this series that I'm getting ready to do on the offer versus the promise to Carrington Vaughn. He's um, an aspiring NFL football player. And um, some things were happening with him and he heard this word and it triggered something in him. And um, nobody knows how it, I know people know how it feels. I won't say nobody knows, but a lot of people uh, probably couldn't understand when you when you ministering or when you are the minister of the gospel and you're ministering in your family and your own family members are affected by what God is speaking through you, especially the young adults. But today was very intentional because I just, I just had a lot on my mind since last week, since that message, and seeing how people's lives are so affected by offers, so changed by offers, and how people settle, they settle for the offer, and some will never see the promise. I saw a little clipping of a, a video that somebody had put up um, when I went off last week and, and it affected me even more about um, the two sisters on my timeline where they got into an argument about a boyfriend and one of them, one of them uh, knocked the other one off the balcony and she died and when she saw her sister down there, she jumped too. What people need help, and this is not the season for a bunch of foolishness because, in many cases, in many cases, the offer already has death in it. If the offer did not come from God. It already has limitations in it, which means the offer has a built-in expiration date, which means it's not going to last anyway. And so when we settle, we settle for the offer in so many ways, uh, people of God on this page, when we settle for the offer we're really setting ourselves up for self-sabotage. It's like we're, we're embezzling from our own lives. We're stealing from our own destiny. And so we're cheating ourselves out of what God really has for us. And I'm going to be ministering on this series because the season that we're in, I just keep hearing the Lord say it over and over and over again. We cannot miss it this time. We cannot miss it this time. 
where the world is, God needs us to be in position. Where the world is, God needs us to be in position. He needs us to be in our rightful place. The place that he has ordained for us to be in. And when God gave me this, let me move these cards and things out of my Bible. This is all the little notes from my pastor Sunday. I read from my pastor and I got all this stuff stuck all through my Bible. He took me to the book of Daniel. And before I go there, I want to read to you and go back to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 2 and 24. And I was questioning the Lord the other day. I think it was Saturday, Saturday morning when I woke up and I was still in Atlanta. And I was, I, I was saying to the Lord, because it, 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 Deuteronomy 2 and 24 would not leave me. And I kept saying to the Lord, why are you saying in Deuteronomy 2 and 24, now arise, continue on and go through the valley of Arnon. Look, I have handed over to you Sihon, the Amorite king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin, take possession of it, and fight with him in battle. There are very key words that are positioned in this scripture. The first one, the first one prophetically is now arrives, which means I, I, one of my spiritual daughters have been sick and, 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 and she sent me a text the other day. She said, you know, there comes a time, mother, when you got to decide that you're going to fight. But in that fight, in that fight, because I, I, I'm telling you, you too close. We too close. How do I know? How do I know? The enemy is too mad about something. You don't, you don't get that mad and ain't nothing happening. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't rage like the enemy has been raging. You don't kick up that kind of warfare and nothing is going on. There's something that God is picking with, with the enemy. There's something that the enemy knows that, as the scripture said, that the Lord has pulled his power from him. He has, he has, he has pulled his spirit from him. He's pulled his know-how from him. In, in, in other words, now whoever is holding the promise, they're standing as an empty body bag against the power of God because not only have the Lord given it to you, he has stripped the enemy of his power. And so he's saying, today, today, I feel this prophetically today, that if you're going to get up in your mind, you have to do it now. Now. Because when prophecy is given, it is not based on emotions. My pastor read that scripture on Sunday, that what the Lord has revealed, it has not been revealed to your senses because in order for you to get the revelation, remember this, in order for you to get the revelation from God, he has to call you to understanding. You have to operate in one of the seven spirits of God in order for you to get this revelation because revelation come through understanding. Remember when I said that, if you just joined the page, welcome, we are the bees. But we talked about the seven spirits of God and how one of the seven spirits is, 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 is knowledge and the other one is understanding and how understanding has revelation in it. You're called to understand because you're chosen by God for the will and the mind of God to be revealed to you. Revealed to you meaning to make known something that was not previously known by any education or sign or inclination. I wasn't taught this. I didn't read this. Nobody told me this. 
the Lord revealed it to me. And when revelation comes, the majority of the time, it won't click with what is in the natural because it is above the natural. Revelation has come to sit above the natural because it is that revelation that's going to come down and change that natural. Did you get that? Did you get that? Because that's where I'm walking right now. It's like the revelation of God is speaking, but the revelation that I grab a hold to, I grab a hold to the revelation up here. And if I'm going to grab a hold to the revelation up here, I have to be willing to leave this space. I have to be willing to leave the space of depression and the space of oppression and the space of I don't know what I'm going to do and the space of how am I going to get this done and the space of Lord you gave me all this and all of this is on my plate and how in the world you have to be willing to leave that space of limitation in your body because I feel the healing power of God. I feel the supernatural power of God oozing out of this house into that Facebook page today. The limitations are going to come off of you and they're going to come off of your body, Carrington, when you go here and not visit here, but make a decision to live here. Because there are people on this page, all of you have people around you and we're going to get to that. But you are becoming a person that is allowing yourself to assimilate. In other words, you're becoming as the group and you're no longer your own individual. You're no longer the person that God is saying, I want to do something supernatural through you because listen, in order for God to do something supernatural, you're going to have to walk disagreeable. In other words, I don't think like that. I don't respond to that. That's not where I am. The Lord has me in another place. And I'm responding to what's up here. I cannot respond to what is down here. Because I'm called to that place. And so, in other words, if I'm going to do the rest of this scripture, then I have to arise now. You have to get up in your mind today. And I hear the Lord saying this, you cannot wait another day. If you are on this page today, you can't afford to allow your mind to dance around in this realm. Not another day. Because it's all up here. It's up here. Good Lord have mercy. This is what the battle is. It's up here. This is where the limitations are. And you can't afford that. Because when God speaks and he tells you he's going to do something, I want you to see that here they are. They're traveling. They're getting ready to go through the land. And they're going through lands, three different properties. They've been in the wilderness 39 years. Here they are in the 40th year and they got to go through three different properties. And the Lord said, you only going to buy food and water. And I want you to hear this because I'm going to stay on this series until I'm finished. They going through the land. They are weary. They are tired. They are frustrated. They are saying, when am I going to ever get there? When am I going to ever get there? The recognition that I deserve. When am I going to get the raise? When am I going to get the promotion? When is my business going to go where I believe God is calling it to go? And so the spirit of frustration is there. And the spirit of frustration is designed for one reason and one reason only. And that is to wear you out. So that in your mind you can give up. You got people that are still operating in things but your mind is not in it. Your mind is giving up. So now you in automation. You go into the job, but you in automation. You work in the business, but you in automation. You doing whatever it is that, that, that you felt was your dream, but now you in automation. You're not in the belief system of it anymore. You got to get back into the belief of what God gave you before you ever walked into that thing. You went into it with a different spirit. Now that you're in it, you cannot change that posture. 
You cannot start acting natural for something God supernaturally gave you. Who am I talking to? Is anybody getting blessed so far? Jesus. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. Because when you do that, you're giving up in your mind. You're giving up hope in your mind. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm going to say something that's powerful. So you remember what he said in the book of Revelation that for the Lord has empowered me to receive this revelation. He has empowered me to receive this revelation. And so we, we, um, we studied that empowered uh, means, M, M means when that power came in me. So in order for you to do what God has called you to do, you're going to have to keep that power in you. Is the bumblebees listening? Do I have any children on this page that, that really, really hear? Because I really want you to get this. That power has to stay in you. Because why? 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 Because you have an enemy of your own mind. You have an enemy that hates what God is transforming you into. And you got to remember that when the enemy, why does the enemy hate it? Because he still wants that ground. Good Lord have mercy. When God gets ready to give you something, he's not giving it to you because, because there's not an enemy that has it. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Are you hearing this? There's nothing new under the sun. That's what the scripture said. There's nothing new under the sun. If you want to own your own beauty shop, that's not new. If you want to own your own bakery, that's not new. If you want to fly planes, that's not new. Whatever your dream is, there's nothing new under the sun, which means the territory that God is going to give you to make your dream come true, there's an enemy that already has it. And watch this. And the territory that the enemy used to occupy in your mind, he don't want to let that go. Because he is the power of limitations. And I can't let this person's mind expand into the third dimension. I can't allow this person's brain to expand into dimensions. Because when they go to the third dimension, watch this. That's not a level. That's in God. If I ever let them escape in their mind the realm of limitation. And I allow them to top the third dimension. That third dimension is going to set them over in God. And when they get in God, they're going to have his mind. They're going to have his will. And they're going to have his way. Which means I will be off limit. I will not be able to do anything with them. That's why the Bible said that when there was a discussion about Job. The Lord said, you can touch everything around him. But don't touch his soul. Don't touch where I have taken him to. Don't touch the communication. That I have with him. Don't touch that dimension. You can touch his realms. But you cannot touch his dimension. And he will not curse me and die. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? So. We have to. Make a move now. Well, I don't. Dr. Bottom, I don't see no money. I don't see no this. I don't see no that. I don't care. I, miss me with all of that. With all of that, with all of that, because if God gives you a vision, the provision is there. But watch this. But are you ready for it? Because the Bible said that 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 a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so why should the Lord give you kingdom money to do something that is supernatural and your mind is unstable? You got to stabilize your mind. I know what I'm talking about. There's days I wake up and I don't, I just like, whoa, whoa. and I said, uh-uh, 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 We will not vacillate from what God is saying. We will not move from this place. We will not move from this place. And I get up, put my things on, go into the gym and walk it off and get some oxygen to my brain so I can think. 
Are, are you, are you, are you hearing this? Because, because my responsibility is to show the Lord that I'm stable in my mind on what he has promised. And I'm not going to settle for the offer. But I'm going to pursue after the promise. And how do I pursue after the promise? My mind remain in the promised land. Did you just get that? I set my mind over in the promised land. Why do you think Israel didn't give up? Because somebody's mind never left that promise. Somebody's mind could not let that promise go. Somebody in their mind said, God said it. And they passed that down to their children. And their children's children. Are y'all hearing this? And by the time they got ready to go, the generation that was going into the promised land, that thing was embedded in them. In the worst hours in the wilderness, their parents and Moses and the priest and the elders preached to them about God's promise to the promised land. And it was instilled in them as a belief system, not an idea. And too many of us got an idea, but that wasn't the idea. That was a revelation that God gave you. That was, that was God's promise to you. And you can't treat it like an idea. Why do, you, why do I know we treat it like an idea? Because an idea is something that can be a good idea today. And tomorrow, I don't feel like doing it. But when it is a revelation from God, even when you want to let it go, it will not leave you. You can't shake that thing. You're trying to get it out of your system. You've even tried to go and do something else. And God keep bringing you right back to it. He keeps get, giving you signs in the streets. He'll let a stranger walk up and start talking to you about it. You can't get it out of your system because it's not your idea. It's not a good idea. It's a God revelation. It comes from another dimension. It cannot be intercepted. But you can't go into it until you arise. Until you get up in your mind. Good Lord have mercy. Jesus. Jesus. He says. <laughs> now arise. And then he said continue. Now that's. That's a. That's a. That's a tricky thing right there. Arise, now arise, continue on. Did, did you see that? Did you see that? Now arise, continue on, which means you can't be out of whack because the word continue means you were doing something. You were doing something, and I want you to stay right there and keep doing that. I want you, I want you, I want you to stay. You don't know the days that I would get up and you know, I have I have my own routine. And I get up early and, 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 and pray, and then I jump up and put my clothes on and go straight to the gym. And I go to the gym, and when you're waking up, all kind of thoughts in your mind. I don't know if I want to do this, and I don't know if I feel like doing this, and I just I just want some chicken. I just want some Popeye's chicken, and I just I just want some barbecue. I'm, I, I don't want no fruits and no vegetables. I don't want to do none of that. I, I, I don't feel like going. And as soon as I hear all of that kind of conversation, that is my indication that the enemy knows that I am on to something. And so what he does is, listen to this, he brings what is the opposite of what God desires you to do to you. It's the offer. Ain't you tired? It's the offer. Ain't you weary? It's the offer. You don't feel like going on gym. It's the offer. But that's not the promise. I've got to get up and go. Because when I hear that, then I know that the enemy has come trying to stop me from doing what I know God told me to continue to do. You got to continue to do it. You got to start doing it and you got to stay right there. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today? Well, I don't see nothing. Well, continue. Well, when is something going to arise and continue? What do I mean by arise and continue? 
I mean, get up in your mind and do it as if you're in it now. I was, I was, I was telling somebody this and, 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 and I, I pray it bless you too. When I was a flight attendant for Pan Am and I worked for Pan American Airlines and, 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 and I remember one morning coming into uh, the crew room and you have to be uh, at the airport in the meeting for on the flight that you're going to go on, the crew meeting, an hour and 45 minutes before the flight takes off. And so I walked in the, in the, in the crew room one day and um, got my, my, my paper and walked in the room. And I was like about five minutes late. And when I walked in, the lady um, that was a supervisor of the flight said, uh, I'm sorry, but you can't, you can't come in. And so I saw that it was supposed to be seven people, and I saw seven people sitting there, and I saw another guy sitting there. And they was like, I, I was like, well, why? She said, because the plane is gone. And so I, I stood there looking confused. You know, I'm in my middle 20s and, you know, got that, Okay, well, I'll get there, and oops, I'm late, and fast for me late, and I ain't but five minutes late. She said, the flight is gone. And I said, well, I don't understand. She said, this room right here is the flight. This is where you learn who the pilot is. This is where you learn whether or not any of us got any medical issues that, that, that may occur in the air. This is where you learn how many passengers are on the board. This is where you learn how many first class people, how many business people. This is where you learn whether or not we have a diplomat on the plane. This is where you learn whether or not you push the door out for emergencies or you pull the door in for emergencies. Do you let out the slide for emergencies or are we going over water? Do you blow into the tube or do you pull the tube? This is where you learn how many feet in this particular plane going to Europe do you pull the oxygen if we go higher than 36,000 feet. You're, you've missed the flight. We can't let you in this room because you know nothing about this flight. Even though the physical plane is on the ground, your mind has to already be on the flight before you get on the plane. Are you hearing me today? My God, you have to already be on the flight of your destiny of the promise before you get on the plane. Too many of us are waiting for the plane to take off and we're not ready to operate that plane. We're not ready to fly in those dimensions. We're not ready to go that fast. We don't know the pilot. We don't know God. We don't trust the pilot. We don't trust God. We don't know if we can survive in that altitude. Who is God talking to today? We don't know who's around us. We don't even know what seat we sit in. Are you hearing God? And you have to know the journey before you take the journey. And you got to get your head back in the journey, your head, your attitude, your spirit, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you communicate, everything about you got to get back into the spirit of what God told you was the promise. Anybody hearing that? Oh, my God from Zion. Jesus, maybe it's just me. Lord, mercy. Woo. Woo. You got to get your head back in there. You gotta get, you gotta get this back in there. Well, how do I get this back in there? Because I gotta get my heart back into it. And how do I get my heart back into it? I gotta get my passion back. How do I get my passion back? In this realm. In this realm. I gotta go back to why I started this journey. I gotta go back to why I start. Look at I'm. I gotta. Whew, I'm going through this. Ooh. My God, my God, my God, my God. I got to know, I got to know why I started this journey. I got to know why was this important. I got to remember the children of Israel said, we got to remember what God told Abraham, that we was going to come to this point and we was going to have to fight. But then he says this right here. He didn't say, now go to the mountaintop because this is the part we don't get this part of the revelation. And I'm getting it 
you're getting it, we're all getting it. It's not I got it and you got to get it. No, we all got to get this part because this is the part that we miss where the revelation of this scripture is concerned. He said, now, arise, phew, continue on, bam. But where do I have to go? Not to the mountain, but now you got to go through the valley. Oh, God, now you go through the valley, not to the mountain. So if you're on this page today and you're walking through the valley, you're on schedule. If you're on this page today and it feels like I'm down in a hole, you're on schedule. Because guess what? God can afford to take you down there because this is up here. Are you hearing this today? He's not afraid of you to go down here because this is up here. And it doesn't matter where I walk. This is up here. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will feel no evil because thou art with me up here. I'm here. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? I'm destined for the valley. When there's a promise that's been given to me, I'm destined for the valley. I'm called to the valley. I'm called to the valley with a confidence from God that I'm going to go through the valley. I'm not going to stop down here with all of this foolishness. I'm not going to stop here and quit. I'm not going to stop here and give up. This will not be a graveyard for me. Who am I talking to right now? I will not bury my dream in the valley. I will not bury my opportunity in the valley. I will not shed myself of the promise that he gave me and be in this valley. Oh my God. God is not shaken by valleys. As long as there is a prophetic word. As long as there's a prophetic word spoken over your life, the valley doesn't make God shake. Because when they looked out in the valley and the prophet saw the valley of dry bones, the spirit of the Lord said prophesy to it. And so everybody that is on this page, if you feel like you are in the valley, I prophesy to you today. Get up, arise, become the army that he told you to be. Not get up and just be a person. Get up and get ready to go to war. Oh my God, Jesus, have mercy. Are you listening to God today? Are you listening to him today? My God, I feel him. Go through the valley. 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 Woo! My God, go through the valley. I didn't tell you to stop here. <laughs> Get up in your mind and go through the valley. The valley, have no fear. Have no fear of where you are in position in the earth realm right now. Because I have already set you there. What did he tell him? I've already put it in your hands. What did he tell Abraham about them? Tell them that when they get to that valley, when they get to that property, I have already put it in their hands. The valley. The valley is the passageway. I must go through this low place to get to my promised place. Woo! My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I, woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, he said, go through, go through, go through the valley, but keep your eyes open. Go through the valley, but look. Go through the valley, but look. Go through the valley, but look. Another translation. Let me go to this translation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this word, God. Thank you for this word, God. Thank you for this word, God. I'm going to the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, it says, on your feet now. Get up on your feet now. Get up now. It says, get started. Cross the brook, Arnon. Look, here's Sihon, the Amorite king of Heshbon, and his land. I'm handing it over to you. It's all yours. Good Lord have mercy. Go ahead. Take it. Go to war with him. Before the day is out, I'm telling you, 
When I read this early, the Lord said to me, this is a real prophecy today. Before today is out, I'll make sure that all the people around here are thoroughly terrified. Rumors of you are going to spread like wildfire. They'll totally panic. In other words, it is necessary that you get up on your feet because the power that I'm going to put around you it's going to send out a reputation about you. Somebody said, well, then why do we have to fight? If the Lord then put it in my hand, then why do I have to fight? I kept saying it to the Lord Saturday. Lord, if you didn't put it in our hands, then why do we have to fight? If you said in the spirit that you have put it in our hands, then why do we have to fight? He said, because I put it in your hands, but I'm calling you to take it out of his hands. Are you hearing this? I put it in your hands in the spirit, which gives you the power to take it out of his hand in the natural. Is anybody listening to this? Anybody got it? Anybody got it today? Anybody got it today? That's the revelation. I want you to be seen as a warrior. I want you to be seen as somebody that have power to take it out of his hand. Well, somebody said, well, why is the warfare so heavy? Because you're on the same property that the enemy still wants. In order for you to know that you are about to possess the land, both of you have to be there at the same time. My God, the person that God has promised it to and the person that is getting ready to have to let it go have to be in the same place at the same time. And that's why you are feeling the warfare because you finally made it to the promise. How do I know that I'm there? I feel the enemy. I feel the warfare. We are on the ground that belongs to me. And he's on the ground that he got to let go. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. But the Lord has already given me the power to fight. And God has already said, I've taken it from him. And I put it in your hands. Now you take it out of his hands. I don't need the keys to houses. I don't need the keys to cars. God said, I don't, I don't need the keys to... To, to, to businesses. I don't need to make money. I've given you that power. But if you are going to live in these houses, you're going to have to take the keys. If you're going to drive these cars that is necessary for your success, you're going to have to go to a dealership. But I didn't already gave it to you. It's already yours. He said, it's all yours. Oh my God, the offer versus the promise. The offer versus the promise. Why is the offer coming? The offer comes because the mind has gotten weak concerning the revelation. The offer comes so that the mind can feel as if something is picking it up. And something is encouraging it. it just, it's a feeling. It wants to feel encouraged. It wants to feel uplifted. And when you are in your feelings, the offer will come to offer you the feeling that you're looking for. While at the same time, it's robbing you of the promise. I don't want an offer. I want what he promised. Cool, bye, 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 shy. Who am I talking to today? My God, I'm done. Jesus. Whoa. I'm going to finish this tomorrow. And um, if I don't finish it tomorrow, I'll just be on here Thursday. But this right here, not only am I going to show you Not only am, am, am I going to show you the power of where you are. Not only am I called in this series to show you how to fight. I'm also called to help you to understand who you are to fight with. Who qualifies to stand with you to fight. Because this time, you won't miss it. You won't miss it.
Jesus. My God. On Monday the 29th, actually Tuesday, so it'll be Monday, and when you get into Monday at midnight on Monday, which would be Tuesday, I feel led to go on a fast. And I'm, I'm feeling led to take this page on a fast. And I have not called a fast for this page in some time. But I heard the Lord say to me before I went on today, fruits and vegetables for 21 days. No cookies, no candy, no sodas. No meat. Juicing and fruits and vegetables for 21 days. He said, it's time for the promise. It's time for the promise. And so I'm asking every person, because even we're going to be calling prayer nights, where well, I'm going to be going live to pray at midnight some nights. Every person that is under the sound of my voice today that wants your promise, and you're not willing to settle for the offer, I'm inviting you to go with me. I'm going to post the fast in a few hours. I'm inviting you to go with me to the promised land. My God, so many things are, are breaking and opening. Not only am I taping for television, but I'm getting ready to go back in the studio my new record is going to be released the first part of next year, the earlier part of next year. And so it's time for me to go in the studio and the project is called The Evolution of Juanita Bynum. And it's a three disc project. And so I, I have to fast now because the promise is at hand. And I'm asking people to pray with me. I'm asking people to pray for me. I'm asking everybody that comes on this page to be an intercessor with me because I'm not out to just do something. I'm out for people's lives to be changed by whatever I do. And if it's not going to bring about a change, then ain't no sense in me doing it. I don't sit on this page because somebody give me a check. Even though some of you, several of you at different points in times, have sent a seed, but it's not because I've asked you. I sit on this page because I'm called to help people change their lives and change their minds. That's why I didn't really think it to be robbery. And somebody said, you know, $300 is a lot for a banquet ticket. I don't think so after I've sat here for a year, a little over a year now. And I just believe that what God is getting ready to do He needs this page. He needs this page. So I know a lot is going on and I know I'm going on television but I'm not called to leave this page. I may not be able to sit here every day but I'm not called to leave this page because God needs this page. And we are people that the Lord has called us. He has called us to be the carriers and to be the pollinators for vegetation, for how people live, how they live their lives. When you see what God has given me as it relates I told the people when I sat here, I thought it was just going to be, we are the bees, and God gave me the scripture. But the Lord took this thing deeper than that. He took it deeper than that. And even next year, in the month of August, I'm going to be doing my first women's empowerment conference. 
and it's called It's Time to Be More. B-E-E dash M-O-R-E. God is on the move. And if you're a woman that's watching this program today, the month of August next year, we're going to do the Be More Conference, Women Empowerment Conference. From the spiritual education to natural education, causing the whole woman to come into her fullness. Because we're not settling anymore for just offers. Because an offer is part of it. I want the promise. And I want somebody to prepare me for the promise. And the promise is all of it. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta go. See you tomorrow, for real.